Footwork, the enigma of the dancing world. In today's video, we'll be stepping through everything from heels and toes to foot roll principles to help you in your dancing. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to The Dancer's Hideout, the place where you'll find all of the tips and tricks to help you and your dancing. My name's Ian, I'm a professional teacher and a former dance competitor with over 30 years of dancing experience and teaching. No matter what style of dancing you do, from ballroom and Latin, to ballet, to salsa, to jazz and tap, there's something for everyone here at The Dancer's Hideout. So, footwork. Now to help explain everything that's involved in today's video, I'm going to be taking things from a ballroom and Latin perspective. That way you'll be able to more easily be able to understand what I'm going to go through today. I will say however that no matter what dancing background you have, you'll still find the information in today's video to be very useful. Whether you come from a ballet background, a jazz and tap background, a salsa background or actually a ballroom and Latin background like mine, the information in today's video will still be very useful for anyone and everyone who is in, interested in dancing and loves to improve their dancing. Footwork generally equates to most people as the proper use of heels and toes when taking dancing steps. However, today's video aims to help distinguish the difference between footwork, the proper use of heels and toes, etc., and how the feet work. This is a little bit of a different aspect. I've found in my own dancing that it's been far more useful and important, both for myself and the people that I've taught, to understand the functionality and therefore like the practicality of how you use your feet. A quote lifted from Len Scrivener's book, Just One Idea, helps to exemplify this aspect just a little bit. In it, he says, the expert dancer ought always to remain aware of his feet, not only because they must conform with a certain amount of latitude to the standard technique, but more importantly because it is necessary for them to be alive and expressive in order to provide a basis, in more senses than one, for a polished interpretation. This helps to illuminate the fact that it is the use of our feet for dancing which is much more helpful for us than just to generalise what step is taken with what particular footwork approach. For instance, knowing how to use a heel when commencing to do a walking step forward in, let's say, a waltz, for example, isn't as helpful as understanding how we actually got onto that step in the first place. Now, when we talk about footwork, it's very common to have the aspect of rising and lowering uh, entailed into it uh, as well, as, the dan as a dancer in any type of style is unequivocally going to use this type of action as well as using their feet to create any kind of like contrast in power or movement or any kind of other form of element. However, this element, for the moment, detracts away from the aspect of feet <clears throat> and how to use them and draws us more into the territory of actually like uh, rising and lowering actions and things like this, which we can talk about another time. For today, we'll keep it on the topic of footwork. A quick disclaimer here, by the way. I genuinely refer to uh, uh, something that I'm trying to explain that has a lot of details and complexity into it as a jam donut. That means that we can call it whatever we want as long as we know what we're on about. So I usually refer to a jam donut in this aspect. So like I said, as long as we know what we're on about, we can call it whatever we want. Many different dance styles have a lot of technical, info, uh, technical jargon used to uh, explain very, very similar kinds of concepts. And so rather getting mixed up in the myriad of all that different uh, uh, aspects. It's much, much easier for me to just use what I feel is the most appropriate way of putting this across. And my own personal experience in the Borum and Latin helps me do that in a lot more, lot more of an efficient way. So as long as we know we, what we're both on about. So when we anatomically look at the feet and like the biomechanical way in which they're composed and how they function, uh, we come to see that there is only a finite amount of ways in which we can actually use them. A generalized term uh, to define footwork is that it, it's whatever part or part or parts of the feet or foot, depending on what you're doing, which are in contact with the floor at any given moment whilst you are dancing. Okay, so it's whichever part of the foot you are in contact with the floor whilst you are trying to take a dancing step. That's what footwork is generally defined as. However, this statement uh, doesn't really help us as it it helps us insofar as that it elaborates what might be explained in a dancing book, for instance, or a technique book of some description, but it actually doesn't, it's so vague and unhelpful that it actually doesn't really help us understand how we actually use our feet. Uh, Oliver Vessel Fairhorn describes in his book, The Irvin Legacy, that 
A dancer without feet is a car without wheels. Undoubtedly, it is necessary to deal intensely with what footwork is and how it is used. This statement is something I've personally had in my mind constantly while I've been uh, doing my own dancing. Uh, the importance of how I used my feet and, and the effects of correctly using them and how that affected what I was actually trying to produce in my own dancing when I was out competing and whatnot uh, has helped my development endlessly and of course helped anybody that I teach as well in their development. Mechanically speaking, there are only eight ways that we can actually define as footwork and these include heel, flat, ball, toe, a pointing toe or a toe without weight if you will, uh, using the inside edge of our toe, the outside edge of our toe and the inside edge of our foot. Generally speaking, no matter what style of dancing you do, these eight ways of using your feet are the universal ways in which all dance styles will take steps when they're producing their own dancing forms of movement. Uh, people might want to be pedantic and say that you can also use like the inside edge of your heel and the outside edge of your heel, but generally speaking you wouldn't really use these aspects because if you use the outside of your heel you're going to fall over and potentially hurt yourself and to be honest with you when you're actually using the inside edge of your heel that's more about that's an effect that's felt when you're actually transmitting your body weight so it's more actually about the uh, normal heel lead that you'll experience when you do that so it can be explained but it's not really that necessary to elaborate further Mabel Ellsworth Todd has described in her wonderful book The Thinking Body okay uh, it's a must read in my opinion for any dancer uh, that the construction of the foot is like an arch, so it has like this arch-like shape to it. Uh, when we move our bodies in the dancing, uh, we're shifting our weight, so the foot bears the weight of that shift as we're potentially preparing ourselves to move and subsequently take steps. An excerpt from her book reads as, All weight passes directly to the talus whence it is distributed to the 25 other bones of the foot which are arranged in a series of arches. This passage helps to open the door a bit on footwork as it implies that our body weight creates the shift in our feet. So it actually encourages us to understand that by moving our body weight, we're encouraging ourselves to produce steps that require us to use footwork. She continues to explain the details of the talus in the aspect of body weight further by saying, the talus rests upon the heel bone, or calcaneus, which is the largest bone of the foot, and extending toward the back and front makes the platform to receive the entire weight of the body and transmit it to the ground. The weight coming through the talus to the calcaneus is distinguished through three distinct articular surfaces, sloping in different directions, one to the back and side, and two to the front. This wonderfully technical definition does help clarify one very important aspect, which is... Body weight helps to create footwork. As we dance our steps, the details of that footwork will change. If I'm dancing a walk forward in a slow foxtrot, for instance, uh, I'll be rolling through my feet to create a foot, what we call a foot roll principle, topic for another day. My step will commence through the, uh, me taking a heel and then rolling that foot onto a flat foot when I'm transmitting my body weight. Uh, if I'm dancing a rumble walk, for instance, like a basic standard rumble walk going forward, I'm going to push that ball of foot across the floor because of the uh, technique required in it and then subsequently the toe before transferring my body weight into the end of that step. To pull from a different dance genre that's a little bit different, ballet, for instance, uh, if you're going to create a releve and go up onto the toes, for instance, you must commence from a flat position and press into the floor as you push yourself up as a very generalised way of explaining that. In salsa, they may, might use a lot more flatter steps or ball flat kind of forms of taking steps and movements and to help accentuate hips and body movement but generally what's happening is that all the time we're shifting our body weight to help create those steps. In all cases the shift of the weight helps settle the possibilities to perform whatever specific requirements are being used. So when we touch on the sub uh, subject of body weight the image of like a, a, a wee fit board pops into my head uh, because uh, I remember becoming uh, very aware of how I was moving my body weight from seeing on the, on the television screen the uh, image of the two feet and the red dot and as I moved my body weight around that little red dot on the TV screen, screen was moving was, uh, with me so if I move my body weight erratically then that's going to move around erratically as well so in order to obviously do very well at the game you have to be very aware of how you were moving yourself but it was a brilliant visualisation tool to help me understand how and where I was shifting my body weight and the feeling of that. Okay, um, If I'm 
standing 50-50 with my feet apart like this and I move my body weight towards the balls of my feet I should feel that I've got like this red dot in the ball, center of the ball of my foot this is shifted into a different place see that's the trick in the dancing to understand that the feeling of the shift of the body weight helps us use the appropriate footwork to exemplify further what steps we're going to be dancing so play around with your own balance to see how that's affecting the way that you can feel where, you're, where you are in your feet before you then commencing your dancing steps and then trying to move your body weight to coordinate it with your footwork will help create much more clearer dancing steps for you. If you've enjoyed today's video then give, us a, uh, give this video a like, I really appreciate it of course. Uh, if you want to see more from the Dancers Hideout don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, ding the bell icon as well to get notified whenever a new video is coming out and if you want to drop a comment down below somewhere of anything that you found useful or uh, quite informative from today's video drop it down there. If you've got any ideas as well, if you want to see something quite specific as well put it in there and we'll see if we can get round to it. But in the meantime I've been Ian, this is the Dancer's Hideout, and it's been a pleasure. <laughs>